Hey folks, this is Vint with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to quickly check out War Tales. This is a game that you can find on Steam for about 35 bucks. It is 25% off until April 24th, 2023. So if you like what you see here, you can get the game for about 26 US dollars. So I have covered this game before back when it was early access, and the game has recently released into its 1.0. It is no longer in early access, and I wanted to revisit this and show you what it was about. I have been spending the last two hours off camera restarting a new playthrough, and for the most part, everything seems to be the same. I have a total of about 16 hours, so like my first playthrough was about 14 hours, and that was the early access build, and now this new playthrough, I'm into about two hours. So for the most part, I know what I'm talking about, but I have not experienced any of the endgame content, just because it'll take you a while to get there. The closest comparison I could make there's a game called Battle Brothers. In Battle Brothers, you control a squad of troops, kind of like Mountain Blade, but it just graphically looks a lot worse. Um, but it's still fun. It's brutal, though. Uh, you control a group of people, and you level them up as they defeat enemies and complete jobs. And there is insta-death in that game. In fact, people will die, more than likely. And it's tough. It's a tough game. You gotta feed people, you gotta equip them, you're constantly finding other weapons and armor. Well, War Tales does something very similar to that. So if you liked the top-down, RPG-ish party nature of Battle Brothers, then you'll like War Tales. So in War Tales, you'll start a new game, typically create a, a quick, uh, you know, set of four people or so. You can actually adjust their names and their classes, and I'll show you all of that in a minute. I really like that. Um, before we go any further, though, let's just jump into the options menu. Just pause if you want to see any of this in greater detail, but pretty much it is what it is. Graphic settings here. Um, there's no, like, screen resolution with the windowed mode, so you just have to kind of guess where you're going to drag the window. The window is draggable, which is nice. Shortcuts and audio settings. So there's that. Okay, so if you start a new game... You can choose your destiny. This is like a, a storybook, choose an option, and you will get something of it. So, for example, your companions are apprentice friends looking for an adventure. Uh, because of that start, you would start with influence plus 30, raw materials minus 5, and then you start with those four classes, which is kind of cool. And then if you want to choose men escorting merchants who lost their employer... You gain 150 crowns and minus two medicine, and you start with those four classes. So you pick like one of five different backstories for your adventures, and then you move on to the next one. Your companions are used to long walks, meaning they don't get fatigued as quickly. Um, they show incredible resilience, constitution increased by 10%. So there are different bonuses. And then finally, um, once you pick one of those, you pick a, a party flaw. So you have to pick a flaw, unfortunately. Uh, I wish that was not a thing. I wish it was an option, but it is what it is. Um, his somewhat meek appearance, a, each companion carrying capacity decreased by one, or uh, a very hard time getting up, danger during rest increased by 10%. Once you get past this part, this is the part that I am incredibly Im impressed with, and I sincerely wish that more games would do this. Exploration mode. There's adaptive exploration and region-locked exploration. Region-locked simply means this zone is always levels 1 through 5, just like in, say, World of Warcraft from way back in the day. Um, this zone over here is always enemies 5 through 10, or what, again, I don't know the numbers. I'm just saying, like, difficulty is static in the different zones. It'll always be easy here, or it'll always be hard here. That's the region-locked exploration. Or you can choose adaptive exploration where the enemies level up with you. I hate that. I prefer region-locked exploration myself because I like the feeling of getting stronger and doing more things. I hate it when, like, the enemy... Like, I hate that I can't go back to previous zones and just kick a bunch of butt. You know what I mean? I, I don't feel as powerful in a game where the enemies are constantly leveling with me. I hate that. Um, I love the idea of separate zones and them always having a static difficulty. That's just how I prefer it. Once you choose one, you can choose your starting difficulty and your starting map. And your starting maps will change 
as you do quests. Like, you you essentially tackle, like, the main quest in a zone, and once you get past that, once you complete that story, you can essentially move on to a new area. You can walk to it back and forth between the old zone and the new zone. Like, you're free to come and go. But you're, each each region has its own, like, main story that you're trying to complete. Um, and by completing these, you unlock new map starting locations. But anyway, combat difficulty, survival difficulty, and save mode. So there are adjustments there. Once you pick all of that, you move on to party creation. And here you can name your characters. You can change the appearance to some degree. It's nothing too grandiose, but uh, you can at least change hairstyle, hair color, and... Uh, different things. On the right hand side, you can choose their starting weapon. Sometimes the ranger or the bowman will always have an, a bow uh, starting weapon. So you can kind of choose between two things. Also, your utility, there's like three things to choose from. One's like a first aid, one's a rage ability. Um, anyway, traits, you can set your positive traits here. And then you have to choose a negative one. It's always you choose two positive and one negative. Again, you can rename these characters as you see fit, or you can randomize them, uh, which is cool. So rather than do all of that, I am going to continue where I left off. And again, this playthrough was based off of two hours. I have not gotten very far um, in this particular playthrough. Uh, difficulty adjustment. Um, this does not look like the game. No, this is not my game. Uh, it, it loaded my 15 hour playthrough from early access. Let's hit load. And yeah, there it is. DGA 2023. Let's try this one more time. Yeah, um, it was fun. This early access journey. I, I, I just loved going around the world. There we are. And so what you're doing, as I just said, you're going to move around the world. Uh, if I hit M, that's the map as it stands in Tiltron County. On the very top middle, it says 11 out of 28 locations discovered, 5 of 28 locations completed, and this is the main quest, the fate of Tiltron. So you'll be anything in purple, for example, is like your main quests. Okay, so that's that. I'm going to move my face over to the left here so that I can show you the bottom right. Um, there's the camp button, and the camp button lets you just pack in for the night and rest. On the very top middle is a fatigue bar. That's your troops fatigue. When it gets to empty, you do very badly in combat. People get miserable. So you do have to camp, and you have to feed your people. By keeping them fed, they stay happy. That's what this little happiness area is. Your troops' happiness evolves over time. If it ever gets to minus five or lower, then someone will want to leave your troop. If it gets to seven, then your maximum valor points, which is like your action points for special abilities, are increased by one. Um, at 15, experience gained in combat increased by 15%. So you get bonuses for keeping your people happy, and you get negative debuffs for keeping them angry and upset. Um, as you can see, time is passing automatically. I'm just going to pause that. But yeah, camping allows you to hunker down for the night uh, or day and just rest and feed your people. But you have, you have to get food. You have to find food in the environment or buy it. There's party management. Uh, open world party management. There's an inventory system on the bottom right. Um, it's pretty, pretty limited. It's like Skyrim in the sense that I can hold 91 weight, and I've got 45 on me right now, so uh, I have to manage a couple of, you know, just get rid of, like, sell things or craft things. Yeah, there's crafting in this game. Um, speaking of crafting, your characters can take different professions, and I'll get to that in a minute. World map, I kind of already showed you. The compendium. Okay, so... As you do things, uh, kind of like in Skyrim where if you keep swinging a sword, you level it up, right? In this game, as you explore locations and as you do professions, as you, as you like craft things, you unlock skill points toward unlocking new things in that area. This first tab under knowledge, that is this bar in the upper left. It's a blue bar. The knowledge ability helps you learn new blueprints, patterns, and recipes. So in order to fill this up, I have to explore the land. And as I explore the land, I fill up the bar. And when I fill up the bar, I get points to spend in this tab only. So I can learn endurance training. The troop is improving its stamina and can move faster. Movement speed in the world is increased by 5%. 
Um, as you can see, some of these are locked. <laughs> and usually that's because you have to like unlock something else. There are prerequisites. There's cannibalism even. <laughs> Your troop is prepared to do anything to survive, including eating their own. Bonus, you can now devour human corpses. Yes, whenever you kill anything, well, at least humans, uh, bandits, whatever, you can actually loot their physical bodies. And if you have the cannibal cannibalism perk, you can eat them. I haven't tried that yet. I don't know if there's a debuff or something for doing that. Eh, maybe on a second playthrough or something like that. That just seems kind of iffy. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not that desperate yet. Uh, but yeah, you can throw points into various things uh, to to improve yourself. The workshop. Um, again, when you camp, there's a little crafting table. And you can craft things like fishing hooks and lock picks. And you find these resources in the environment. You find iron ore. Uh, you can craft rope, you find wood in the environment, uh, cloth, and in doing so, you can craft these things. And again, I don't have everything unlocked yet. You, you can buy a recipe and learn the recipe, or just by doing enough of something here it related to this tree, you unlock more stuff. There's also the anvil for blacksmithing. There's the apothecary table for alchemy. Um, and there's not yet known. There are other professions that I'm sure I unlocked them either playthrough but didn't unlock here. Other professions that I can't unlock. But each character in your party can only have one profession. So more than likely, there's going to be a profession or two that you're just not going to have unless you decide to swap them out. I think you can do that. Don't quote me on it. So there's that. Um, paths. Okay, so challenges in the game. Like, these are just... You earn these points, power and glory. Uh, right now, I have zero out of five of these uh, power and glory points, or whatever they're called. And in doing so, I unlock more recipes and bonuses. So just keep doing things. Keep bounty hunting. Keep doing recklessness. Spend 20 non-temporary valor points. Uh, forge five tier one weapon armors, whatever. So just do these things and unlock points for the paths, which is kind of cool. Okay. Um, as far as everything else, I think I've covered everything. Upper right-hand corner, influence. They can be used to recruit new companions. Yeah, uh, you start with four, but you can actually get more than four, uh, which is cool. I don't know if there's a max. Uh, maybe six, but don't quote me on it. Uh, valor points. Um, valor points are tied to special abilities that you can enact in combat. So if I want to do a special ability in combat, it usually costs me a valor point. You regain valor points when you rest, uh, but typically they don't recharge. You can gain temporary uh, valor points to use in that combat if you have a certain talent tree skill, which I'll show you in a minute. Food. You have to keep your people fed and you feed them every time you camp. So there's that. Gold. Um, you have to pay wages, like in Battle Brothers, and you have to pay wages too. You have to keep them happy. The RPG element to this, I'm going to go ahead and right-click over here on myself. All right, so I am a level 2 archer, okay? And if I click the little up arrow, those are aptitude points. Right now, it looks like the max level is 12. So as you level from top to bottom, you can choose various, like one of three things. A very, very dumbed down, new style World of Warcraft talent tree system, which uh, I don't know if they've changed it, but I, I vaguely remember them getting away with the, the three tabs and 80 tr skills per, no, they, they, they did away with that in favor of pick one of three things. Stupid. Um, anyway. Um, you're going to do something similar here. It's, it's more bare bones and it, it's missing a more extensive talent tree than I would have liked. But yeah, you can level up here and whenever you level up, like in Battle Brothers, I'm going to be saying that a lot, it will give you like three different attributes to level up and some will have like one plus on it. Some will have two pluses on it. Um, so like it will sort of encourage you to take this thing or, or to level up this attribute because you'll get more of a level up. But let's say, let's say dexterity just has one plus on it and willpower has two, but you really want dexterity. You could do that. You just won't level up dexterity as much as you would willpower because of that. So that's that. Um, any profession they have is shown here. I'm going to go back. So the, again, RPG system, there's uh, different slots that you can equip to your character, skills down here. Um, people can get relationships in this game, like friends, enemies, and like if, let's say I accidentally hit a friend in combat, their relationship suffers to the point where bad things could happen or good things could happen. 
Um, experience, level two, attributes here, movement, all that good stuff, traits that I started with. Defense, this is repairable stuff. This is like, this represents your armor. And when that goes down to zero in combat, it stays zero until you repair it with a repair kit or uh, like raw materials, or you go to a blacksmith in town and pay to have it fixed there. I think it's cheaper to go to town and have it pay, uh, have it fixed there. So I just, as a quick note, I would do that instead. So um, I'm going to go ahead and unpause now, and I'll show you town since I'm here. I, I just walked into town. There's a forge, and these buildings are pretty static. One thing I don't like is I'm holding in left alt right now, and these the items that I can interact with are barely highlighting. I wish it was a stronger flash or brightness or something, because left alt just doesn't do it enough for my old eyes. Um, if I go to the anvil, um, I do have an apprentice blacksmith, and I could craft sickles, uh, padded jackets, whatever. And as I do this more, I get more recipes and I can forge new things. There are mini games associated with that. Click the click the button at the right time for the anvil to come down when it's gold or whatever it is. Uh, so little mini games like that. You can also sell and buy from people. You can even steal from them too, but uh, I never tried that yet. But yes, you can, you can sell things to NPCs in this game to get money. Uh, I'm going to leave that. Town Hall. Uh, market, apothecary, and inn. In the inn, you can take on quests. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on Emissary Goonie over here, whatever. And let's go ahead and review. Okay, so I have two quests. I have two easy quests, and they will show up on the map. But yeah, you can take various quests. You get gold typically for that, and they range from easy, normal, and hard difficulties. Okay, so I'm going to leave that, and let's talk less and play a little bit more. So I'm going to hit depart. And M. Okay, so it looks like the uh, Paranar gang is to the left. I'm going to head that way. Um, there is a jail. One thing you can do in this game if you buy manacles from the jail, uh, you actually get the option to capture enemies uh, through like a 70% capture chance, whatever. And then you can bring that party member, or well, it becomes a party member, the prisoner, and then you can bring it to jail, turn in the prisoner, and get some money for it. That's kind of cool. I like that. Or you can even recruit people in the environment. That's also kind too. But I'm going to head this way. Uh, I'm going to left shift it because I do have a skill that allows me to sprint while I'm on the map. It just makes travel a whole lot faster. You can interact with NPCs as you pass by them. It's really foggy right now. So apologies. Like it's just the weather. Sometimes it's really sunny and clear. Um, sometimes it's not. Sometimes you'll find wolves or animals in the environment, and that's a good way of getting free meat without having to pay for it. All the food in this game has some kind of, like, nutritional value, and when you're feeding your people, you have to, like, add your food up to the total nutritional value that you need. Uh, looks like I'm closing in on my target there. You can sometimes surprise, um, your targets. If they're facing a different direction, a little cone will pop up, a cone of, like, vision. And if you sneak up on them and engage with them without them seeing you, you get a bonus, which is kind of cool. Looks like they're... Okay, they're facing that way. I don't know if I'll be able to sneak up on them or not, but... Uh, probably not. I may just run into them just to do it. Okay. Um, okay. So there we go. The ringleader, Perinar the Tough. Uh, level 1 hoodlum. Okay. Now, it's very possible that he has more. I do have my text set, set to large, and it's very possible that the window isn't large enough, but we'll see. Um, when your turn comes around, play any unit you haven't used yet. Yeah, okay. So, when battle starts, you will choose where to put your people. Um, so, I'm going to click and drag and hold. Click and hold. Uh, I'm going to bring my tank, and this is my brawler. This looks like lightning. A lightning bolt kills any unit it strikes. Well, that's not good. Um, that's... Okay, well, this is my ranged. I'll just go ahead and maybe shoot. I think I want to take down the hoodlum first. This guy is a little bit tougher. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my archer. And on the very bottom right is a list of my skills. I can move up to a certain limit, and that's represented by the blue area there. Vicious Shot is something I have, but I'm not in range. Um, looks like on the bottom left is the initiative. He's going to go first. Maybe I back up and let him come to me. Um, I don't know. I do want to get in range of a shot if I can. So if I did something like that, and then, yeah. 
I'm going to, yeah, I'm just going to hit that guy and knock him back a little bit. I've got a special bow that whenever I hit a person, it repel, or it repels them backwards. Uh, different weapons that you equip will have different attributes and give you different skills on the bottom here. So this aim button is gain deafness. Uh, so I can spend these valor points on the bottom middle. Eat, that is party wide, by the way. So if I spend a valor point as the archer, I'll have two left that the rest of my party can use. So anyone can use a valor point, but it is a, a, a party pull of, of sorts. Okay, so can I just move... I'm just going to move back there and end my turn. So I did what I needed. Um, this guy is going to go next. So I'd hate to move up and then get wrecked. I kind of want to like lure him here so that he stands in front of this bolt. So I might just do so. I'm just curious to see if he'll do that. And Sarah's turn. Let's see if he is stupid enough. Okay, he actually went around. And he did some kind of like wild swing attack that just poisoned two of my people, which sucks. All right, I'm going to cleave, but you'll note that I can do friendly fire with cleave. It's my bane attack. I'm going to face this way and just do that instead. That's nine damage, not bad. Um... I don't know why tutorials are popping up, but so it goes. Um, now, I can also do this. Destabilizing Strike. I can spend a Valor Point to do this. Deals 7 to 9 damage to the target and applies Destabilization. Guard reduced to 0. I'm not going to worry about that. End of turn. Okay. Idalee's turn. I'm going to go ahead and get in there, just right behind. And whenever you surround your enemy completely... Like with three different characters, they take bonuses to dam like they take penalties to damage, that kind of thing. I'm going to do this poisoning attack. Good. And she's got a, a talent that whenever she ends her turn next to an enemy that is engaged with someone else, I get a temporary, a free temporary valor point, which is kind of cool. Um, I also have a knife that I can throw in my offhand, and I can do that if I want to. I'm not going to use it, though. Um, I'll just end my turn. And now this guy's going to go. I'm curious. Maybe I should have moved up for... Oh, wait. Maybe he's in range of that lightning bolt. We'll find out. Uh, nice. <laughs> it did work. Just with the, wrong, with the other guy. All right. So I gained a party-wide buff. And that says damage increased by 50%. Well, let's just finish the job, shall we? Um, just stab. Dead. I unlocked the trait glorious. Okay, cool. And now I can loot human remains. Again, if I was a cannibal, I could make use of that. A ringleader's dagger. It's a level one. Uh, gives me the devious whirlwind skill. So I'd have to think about replacing my rogue's dagger. Um, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna loot everything and sort it out later. I can repair with raw materials, but like I said, it's very. Uh, it, it's I, I I don't think the raw materials are worth it. I think going to the blacksmith, at least in the early access build, it was cheaper to go to the blacksmith and repair there than it was to use these raw materials. So I'm just going to hit continue. And now my party really wants the camp. Now I've completed that, so um, I can go back and get my money. But I'm going to go ahead and camp so that my people don't get upset with me. So here there is... Oh yeah, you start with a pony too, which is kind of cool. Uh, it's just a way of trucking your things around it never enters combat at least it hasn't for me yet um okay so there's a crafting table a workshop there and i can make use of that with my tinkerer to craft things like torches and lock picks and fish hooks and tents different things like that even different camping gear that you can put down that's cool um looks like some people can level up and i'll do that off camera because i already showed you that character screen I'm going to quickly show you what it's like to feed people. So again, you've got food, and it says here that um, they want 15 food. So um, this bread has, it's four a piece, that's two a piece. Um, I guess I'll give them the cider, that way it just makes it, yep, even. All right, there we go. So 15 out of 15 food. This also has the side effect of making troops happy by an extra one. So there's a buff to that food. Yeah, different foods will also give your parties different buff, which is kind of cool. And then we'll rest. And that free fills my bar on the very top, my fatigue bar. Camp report, you have gained two valor points for, for actions. I gained happiness and so on. I also gained 25 influence. And again, I can spend influence in different ways. So that, in short, 
<laughs> in short, it's been 25 minutes at this point. That, in short, is uh, War Tales. And that is a rinse and repeat kind of thing. Uh-oh. I won't last long at this rate. My ribs hurt and I can't see clearly. Well, that's not good. Um, requires one, gets minus three. Uh, so I lose... This is two valor, minus five happiness, plus fatigue... Or curl up into a ball and cry. You know, let's just do this require. Yeah, let's just spend our. Yeah, we'll just spend that and get minus three valor points. Anyway, negative effects just popped up on me. But anyway, that, that is the general gameplay flow here. You're going to go out into the world, do quests. You can look around. The main thing is keep your people paid, keep your people fed. And you can continue doing this for as much as you want. You will find, like, there's uh, objects up there in the environment that you can loot. I need to get back to town, though. You'll find side quests that you can embark on. But primarily, your job is to complete the main story in a location and move on to the next area. Now, you can work on two places at once. So sometimes you'll get access to the next area without completing the existing one. I've done that in early access. Um, so it is possible, but, uh, for you completionists, you may want to work on one at a time. And again, because of the whole region locked difficulty setting, you may want to just hang around here for a bit longer. So there you go. That was War Tales. I do recommend this game, especially now that it's 25% off. Um, yeah, I mean, you're going to get a lot of playtime out of this. Again, I had s about 14, 16 hours on my previous playthrough. And that was just the one playthrough. So yeah, totally worth it. If you guys haven't already, um, subscribe to me on Twitch and YouTube. That way you can stay up to date with any new content I happen to publish. This is Vince. Thanks for watching and I will catch you all next time. Take care.